Welcome once again to another interesting topic. This time around, we'll be talking on the story of Samson. After the death of Joshua, Caleb, and all the generations that came to the land of Canaan, there arose another generation after them, which knew not God, nor his works, which he has done for Israel. They went completely into idol worshipping, and God's anger was kindled against them and delivered them into the hands of their enemies, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. It was at this moment of their torture that they remembered God of their fathers. And God will raise up judges to deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. But as soon as the judges die, Israel will again go back to idol worshipping. And when they are tormented by their enemies, they will again cry to God. And he will raise up for them a judge to deliver them. It continued that way until a steady time when Israel in their usual manner forsook the God of their fathers, and went completely into idol worshipping. And God left them into the hands of the Philistines, who oppressed them for forty years. Again they cried out to God, and God hearkened unto their prayers. But this time around, the person whom God wants to use to deliver them has not been born. At that time, there was a man named Manoah, from the town of Zorah. He was a member of the tribe of Dan, and his wife was barren. The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said, You have never been able to have children, but you will soon be pregnant and have a son. Take care not to drink any wine or strong drink or eat any forbidden food. And after your son is born, no razor must come upon his head because from the day of his birth, he will be a Nazareth to God. And he will be the one to rescue Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman went and told her husband, saying, a man of God came to me, and he looks as frightening as the angel of God. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name, and he told me that I would become pregnant and have a son. He told me not to drink any wine or strong drink or eat any forbidden food, because the boy is to be a Nazareth unto God. Then a man prayed to God, saying, Please, Lord, let the man of God that you sent come back to us and tell us, what we must do with the boy when he is born. God answered the prayer of Manoah, and his angel came back to the woman while she was sitting in the fields. Her husband Manoah was not with her. So she ran at once and said to him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me again. Manoah got up and followed his wife. He went to the man and asked, Are you the man who was talking to my wife? Yes, he answered. Then Manoah said, When your words come true, what must the boy do? What kind of life must he lead? The angel answered and said, Your wife must be sure to do everything that I have told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine. She must not drink any wine or drink or eat any forbidden food. She must do everything that I have told her. Manoah did not know that it was the lost angel. So he said to him, Please, do not go yet. Let us cook a young goat for you. But the angel said, If I do stay, I will not eat your food. But if you want to prepare it, burn it as an offering to the Lord. Manoah replied, Tell us your name, so that we can honor you when your words come true. And the angel asked, Why do you want to know my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a young goat and some grain and offered them as burnt offering to the Lord. While the flames were going up from the altar, Manoah and his wife saw the lost angel go up towards heaven in the flames. Manoah then realized that the man that was talking to them has been an angel of God. And he and his wife threw themselves to the ground. And Manoah said to his wife, Ah, we shall surely die, because we have seen God. Ah, but his wife answered, If the Lord had wanted to kill us, he would not have accepted our offerings. He would not have shown us all this or told us such things now. The time finally came. The woman gave birth to his son and named him Samson. The child grew and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of God was upon him and strengthened him. One day, Samson went down to Timna. Timna is in the land of the Philistines where he noticed a certain Philistine woman. He went back home and said to his father and mother, 
There is a Felicity woman down at Timna who has caught my attention. Get her for me. I want to marry her. But his father and mother asked him, Why do you have to go to those hidden Felicities to get a wife? Can't you find a girl in our own clan among all our people? But Samson said to his father, She is the one I want to marry. Get her for me. I like her. His parents did not know that it was the Lord who allowed Samson to marry from there. So that Samson will have the opportunity to deal with the Philistines. So Samson went down to Timna with his father and mother. The parents went first. As Samson was going, behold, a young lion suddenly came to attack him. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And he fought with the lion and killed the lion with his bare hands. Then he went and talked to the woman. Indeed, he liked the woman so much. A few days later, Samson went back to marry her. On the way, he left the road to look at the lion he had killed. And he was surprised to find a swarm of bees and some honey inside the dead body. He scraped the honey out into his hands and ate it as he walked along. Then he went to his father and mother and gave them some. They ate it, but Samson did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the dead body of a lion. His father went to the woman's house and Samson gave a banquet. This was a custom among the young men. When the Philistines saw him, they sent 30 young men to stay with him. Samson said to them, Let me ask you a riddle. I bet each and every one of you a piece or a fine linen and a change of fine clothes that you can't tell me its meaning before the seven days of the wedding feast are over. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let us hear it. And he told them, Out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. Three days later, they had still not solved the riddle. Wow. On the fourth day, they said to Sansi's wife, Remember, Sansi's wife supposed to be one of them. They said, Come, try to tune your husband so that he will tell us what the riddle means. If you don't, we will set fire on your father's house and burn you with it. You two invented us so that you could rob us, didn't you? So Sansi's wife went to him in tears and said, You don't love me. You just hate me. You asked my friends a riddle and did it tell me what it means? And he said, Look, I haven't even told my father and my mother. Why should I tell you? She cried about it for the whole seven days of the feast. But on the seventh day, he told her what the riddle meant. For she has cried and cried and cried. So Stacy could not bear the cry anymore. Then she went to meet the Philistines and told them the riddle. And what is the meaning of the riddle? What could be sweeter than honey? And what could be stronger than a lion? Then they came back to tell Samson the meaning of the riddle on the seventh day. And Samson said, Well, I know how you people got the answer. Then God's spirit came upon him and he went to Ascalon. Ascalon is a city in the land of the Philistines where he killed 30 men and took their garments and then used it to pay the debt. Some time later, Samson went to visit his wife during the wheat harvest. He said to her father, I want to go to my wife's room. But the father refused. And Samson asked, why? And the father said, I thought you don't love her anymore. I have given her to your companion. And Samson said, This time, I am not going to be responsible for what I will do to the Philistines. So he went and caught 300 foxes. Two by two, he ties their tails together and puts fire on their tails. Then he allowed the foxes to run into the farms of the Philistines to burn down their crops. And then the Philistines asked, Who is behind this thing? And someone said, Ah, it is Samson, no? And then they asked, Why did Samson do this thing? And then they said, It is because Samson's father-in-law took his wife and gave her to his companion. And do you know what happened next? 
The Philistines went and burnt the woman to death in her father's house. Santi told them. So this is how you act. I swear that I won't stop until I pay you back. He attacked them fiercely and killed many of them. The Philistines started wondering about the strength of this young man. Who is this young man? Who is this young man? They made the inquiry that this young man is from Israel, from the tribe of Dan. Then the Philistines came to Judah with their army. The men of Judah asked them, Ah, 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 why are you attacking us now? What have we done? Then they answered, We came to take Samson prisoner and to treat him as he has treated us. So the elders of Judah, they went to meet Samson. And they said, Why have you done this to us now? You know that these people, they are the one ruling us. So, eh? Look at the trouble that you have, you have brought upon us now. Eh? We have come here to tie you up so that we can hand over you to the Philistines. And Samson said, Give me a word that you will not kill me by yourself. And the sword that no, that we will only just hand over you to the Philistines. Finish. And so Samson followed them. And then they binded Samson by his hand and his leg. And when the Philistines saw Samson, as we were coming to arrest Samson, something happened. The Spirit of God came mightily upon Samson. And he saw the bone of an ass, with which he used to fight with the Philistines. And he killed 1,000 of them with a bone of an axe. Despite their arrows, despite their swords, despite all their weapons, with just a bone of an axe, he killed 1,000 soldiers. After the battle, Sassy became thirsty and they cried to God, Ah, is this how we die? You have given me great victory. Is this how we now die of thirst? And God opened a hollow place in the ground where water came out and Sassy drank. And the spirit revived. There came a time that Sansi went to the Philistine city of Gaza, where he met with a harlot and went into her. So they found out that Sansi is in the house of that harlot. They were quiet at night. So they surrounded the place and waited for him all night long at the city gates. They were quiet all night, thinking to themselves, We will wait until daybreak and then we will kill him. But Samson stayed in bed only until midnight. Then he got up and took hold of the city gates and pulled it up. Both the doors, the post, the lock, everything. He pulled the entire city gates and placed it upon his shoulder and carried them all the way to the top of the hill. Hmm, what kind of strength does Samson have? Again, Samson fell in love with another harlot called Delilah. The Philistines, they went to meet her and they said, Help us to tune Samson so that he will tell you the secrets of his strength and we will pay you 1,100 pieces of silver. And the woman promised to deliver Samson into their hands. Delilah now came to Samson and said, Please, Tell me what makes you so strong. If someone wanted to tie you up and make you helpless, how could the person do it? Samson answered, If they tie me up with seven new bow strings that are not dried up, I will be weak as every other man. Truly, the woman tied him up while he was asleep. And then he woke up Samson. Samson, get up. The Philistines are upon you. Sassy got up with his full strength. And the woman said, Ah, you lied to me. You told me that if I do this, that you will be weak. Now you are telling me lies. Oh, you don't love me. You don't love me. You don't love me. Then again, Sassy answered and said, If they tie me with new ropes that have never been used, I will be weak as anybody else. Again, the woman tried it. Yet, Sassy remained strong. Again, the woman started crying. Ah, you have lied to me. Then, Sassy again answered. If you weave my hair and make it tight with a peg, I will be as weak as every other person. While Sassy was asleep, the woman again did it. Yet, Sassy remained strong when he woke him up and said, 
Look, the Philistines are upon you. Stasi got up with his full strength. Again, the woman cried. You have deceived me these three times. You don't love me. And she started crying. And Stasi could no longer bear her cry. As long last, Samson now told her, My hair has never been cut because I was born in Nazareth to God. If my hair is shaved, I will become like every other man. It was then that Delilah Lan knew that this is the real truth. And then he went to the Philistines and told them, Behold, look, he has told me his entire secret. And so Delilah lured him to sleep. And they called a man who shaved the whole of Samson's hair. Then he called the Philistines, Come, come and take your enemy. And the Philistines came. And then he woke up Samson. Samson, get up. The Philistines are upon you. When Samson got up, he thought that God was still with him. Unknown to him, God has left him. And then the Philistines came. Behold, he found out that he was just like every other man. So empty. Nothing was with him. And then they bounded Samson. Imagine when you get hold of your enemy. What will you do to your enemy? That was what they did to Samson. They first of all blinded his two eyes. And then they kept him in the prison. Then they set it aside in which they will thank their gods for delivering Samson into their hands. And while Samson was in the prison, his hair started growing again. Then came the D-Day in which they will thank their gods for delivering Samson into their hands. And so, the whole kings, the whole warlords, the whole governors, all the well-to-do men of the Philistines, they all gathered in one place, in one big hall, to thank their gods for delivering Samson into their hands. And then they now said, bring us Samson. Bring him out so that we will use him to play. And so they brought Samson out. And Samson said to the young boy that was leading him, Come, take me to the main pillar of this building. And so the young boy led him to the main pillars of the building. And Samson prayed, O oh God of heaven, the sovereign Lord, remember me. Give me strength just this once. So that I can avenge my blindness. Let me die with the Philistines. After saying that prayer, the Spirit of God descended upon Samson. And strength from the Almighty came upon him. And he pushed the pillars. And the entire building collapsed upon the wicked ones. Upon the five lords of the Philistines. Upon the governors. Upon all the top, 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 top leaders of the Philistines. And they all died in one day. And the Bible says that those that Samson killed during his death were more than those that he killed while he was alive. And that was how Samson delivered the children of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Yes, he died according to his prayer that let him die with the Philistines. And so it happened that truly he died. Then his people, the people of Judah, they came to carry his corpse and bury him. Samson judged Israel for 20 years and he judged his people with love. And he is the only judge whom God Almighty used single handedly to deliver the children of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. He was a one man riot. No army was with him. He alone delivered the children of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Sassy weakness is women. He loved women so much to the extent of letting them know his secret. And at the end, that was how he was arrested after his secret was made known. Samson is among the ancient world is who will be rulers in God's kingdom here on earth. This is according to Hebrews chapter 11 when you read from verse 1. Evil write down 35. Where Apostle Paul made mention of Samson, who also is among the ancient worldies, who will be partakers of the better resurrection. Here, I come to the end 
of the story of Samson. Do you have any question? Please drop your question in the comment section. Thank you.